All right, Todd Billy, you know I had to get up on this one, right? My former stomping grounds out there at USC with my boy JT Daniels deciding to hit the transfer portal. Now, this is something that I thought about in the middle of the season when Keaton Slovis got it cooking. I thought that, man, JT Daniels only got to play the first half of the first game against Fresno State, and a true freshman came in and absolutely lit it up under a new guidance right under new guidance with Graham Harrell being the offensive coordinator so he got the most time right he got an entire season under Graham Harrell and did a great job I think it's best for JT Daniels to leave and it's not an indictment on JT Daniels talent because he would have done the same exact shit that Keaton Slovis did mark my words we see right here Keep in mind, right, in 2018, that was a bad year for USC all around, and my man was a true freshman. But not only was he a true freshman, he was a reclassified 2019 cat. So he should have been a true freshman this season. He only played three years of high school and ended up starting at the college level, which would have been his senior year in high school. Now, that's crazy, right? He went for 59.5 on a completion percentage, 14 TDs, 10 INTs, but he showed himself to be a very good player, in my opinion. Very talented guy, can push the ball down the field, has great pocket presence, and, man, he's one of the all-time highest-rated players in the history of high school football. We see here coming out when he reclassified, he was reclassified and still was a top 16 player in the country for the 2018 class. So that would be um, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, all those guys like that. He was in their class. Imagine that, right? So with that being said, my man is a top 350 all-time player. You see right here, number 342 all-time. This is no joke. This guy is extremely talented. It's rare that cats like this are out on the market, and it's rare that he was coming from an air raid offense after being kind of a, in a balanced offense the season before under Clay Helton, and um, we know the style of ball that he likes to run. So he's got a couple of different regimes under his belt, a couple of different concepts and way of operating, and he's hitting the market as a red shirt sophomore. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, before I talk about a few places that I want to see Daniels go, you know I got to do a little bit of a film study, right? Real quick here. All right, I have a ton of film study on this cat. Uh, in full disclosure, I worked at Rivals.com, the USC site there, Trojansports.com, for a little bit over two and a half years. And then right after that, I worked for USC247.com with my man Chris P. Swanson when he left as the publisher from that rival site. Right up until I this particular channel took off, that's what I was doing. I was covering the Trojans, man. So got a lot of stuff on JT Daniels here, and I know exactly what his game entails. So, all right, we see a third level sin here. He's able to sense that. You can see him going through his progressions, right? He's one of these kids. He's a he's a prodigy type kid. He loves to go through and do full scan reads. You see him able to evade here, step up in the pocket, keep his eyes up, Phil. He's got Tyler Vons over here, breaking it back off. Look at the product placement, getting that right there against Texas as a true freshman there. Tyler Phil's able to break a tackle, get up field over on Chris Boyd there. All right, presumably his last game as a Trojan, first half of the first game. We see him going through his reads here. Scan from, right, real quick scan from Lucy to Ricky. Drifting, drifting, can feel pressure in his face. And I noticed that he was a little bit more willing to tuck that bad boy and run. That's why and you can see that he has pretty good athleticism, right? He's wasn't not labeled as a dual threat or anything like that, but he's not a stiff by any stretch of the imagination, man. He's a prototypical kind of a balanced type QB. Not a super athlete by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not going to lie to you, but not a stiff and he can get stuff done with his legs as far as achieving first downs and definitely being a pocket wizard. That's his thing. All right, it's top billing. So you guys know what I look for. That will be opposite hash throws and throws outside the numbers. So we get a back-to-the-basket play-action fake here. Remember, he's running this Graham Harrell offense, this air raid. Back-to-the-basket play-action fake. Looking Lucy, right? You see him with the crossover steps, very classic, where he holds his ball and everything the hand break from the ball opposite hash throw look at the product placement on this bad boy 
Look at that. Ah, uh, right to Tyler Vons, who has to be the oldest man in the history of college football. I swear, man, Tyler Vons had to have played with Mark Sanchez. He's been there forever. But look at this throw. Uh, this was an out route. So right an out route past the numbers from the opposite hash. This is the type of pass that if you've played ball, these are your favorite type of passes because usually guys don't have the arm strength to get it there, and you can pick that off. You see right there, he's unable to pick it off. Outside and away. What a throw, man. People are going to look at them like, oh, what does that mean or whatever. Like that. That's an NFL throw. That is a throw that when they scouts turn on the film, that's one of the throws that they're going to look for just because of how the hashes are placed in the NFL. The kid's got some arm strength. All right, we see him pushing the ball down the field. Front facing play action fake. Now look at him. I told you before, very polished kid. Always going to be looking off the safety. You see him come backside just to hold the safety just a little bit to shoot the ball down the field to his former high school teammate, Amon Ross St. Brown, one of the best receivers in all of college football that most people don't even know about. Gets it down there to this kid. This kid, I love watching this kid play, man. Both these guys, man. So all you Alabama fans out there know, of course, about Bryce Young coming to five-star cat. This is the the player before Bryce Young uh, was the quarterback up there at modern day. It was JT Daniels' team. So he's in very good company there. All right, you guys know I have this down to a science. I'm already thinking about scheme, who's already on the roster and whatnot. I'm trying to give these guys a real shot to succeed when I place them in other programs. Tate Martell didn't listen. Now where is he at now? Somewhere selling insurance, I bet. All right, so check it out. The first thing that comes to mind for me is Texas, and this comes with a caveat. If he's eligible right away, if that new rule passes and he gets to get a mulligan and just go to a new school for a one-time transfer deal, Texas wouldn't be my first choice, but it would still be a choice. Sam Ellinger's there right now, and he could possibly win the Heisman Trophy. Texas should be pretty good this season, and Sam Ellinger is that dude. Um, being able to go with Mike Yurchich coming in, I think they're going to be a little bit more of a passing team, maybe a downfield passing team, but that remains to be seen. <laughs> we will see what Tom Herman is all about. We'll see if he can really relinquish control of that, but JT Daniels will be a good fit there, and you always want to go up to a place where they have weapons. So I think about guys like Marcus Washington and Brennan Eagles and Jake Smith. Uh, you're going to have a pretty good run game there with Rashawn Johnson, B. John Robinson there. Is it's going to be real good for Texas on the offensive side of the ball. Got to see what that defense is looking like, but they have some players over there as well. So Texas will be a good fit either way. Wouldn't be my number one fit if he's eligible right away, though. And yes, I know about Hudson Card and Casey Thompson being on the roster. JT Daniels is better than both, in my opinion. All right, the second team that comes to mind is the Florida State Seminoles, the former Mecca of college football. Leaving one former Mecca for another former Mecca, both teams looking to get back on the right track. Florida State, no matter what people say, is still loaded with talent. To me, this would be my most favorite destination if he is eligible right now. Not a big James Blackman guy. In fact, I don't really like him at all. Yes, he can push the ball down the field. That's pretty cool. Uh, he's actually a very good deep ball thrower, but he leaves a lot to be desired everywhere else. Decision-making. Anything you can think of, the, the quick game, all of that stuff, to me, he lacks. That's what JT Daniels shines. He's great in the quick and mid-distance stuff. I think his decision-making is better than James Blackman. I think he can push the ball down the field as well. They do a lot of that at USC. I just, I, mean, I don't think he's a better overall talent than a James Blackman. I think he could take his job, especially considering it's a new regime and a new offense. So James Blackman does not have that much of a leg up over anybody else. JT Daniels could come in there throwing to that boy, Tamorian Terry, a.k.a. T. And T, the most explosive cat in football. Got DJ Matthews there. <laughs> Got a host of other receivers. Florida State is still loaded now. Let's not let's not get it twisted there. He would have a bevy of wide receivers and tight end targets to throw to. Offensive line is a little bit suspect, but hey, it was suspect at USC too, so he should be used to that, right? All right, this next team is ready to win now. If his quarterback had one more season of eligibility left, it might be my favorite to win the national title this season, and that is the Oregon Ducks. Yes, I know about Tyler Shuck. You've seen it right here on the channel with me doing a breakdown of him. Same thing with Anthony Brown. I know about Robbie Ashford. 
I know about all these guys they have on the roster. None of these guys were JT Daniels coming out of high school. Let's be real about the situation, man. This is a damn juggernaut in the making. I done told you boys time and time again, Oregon ain't playing out there. And having a guy like JT Daniels, especially if he's eligible immediately, who man, come on now. I believe in Tyler Shuck, Anthony Brown, or whatever they want to do out there, but this team is just too damn loaded, man. Too damn loaded. He would have as many weapons, if not more, than he had at USC, a better defense, some better offensive line personnel overall, right? I know a lot of these guys haven't played, but I know about, about these guys that are that are going to be stepping up. Some of them did play. Just a, just a, a, a juggernaut team, man, a juggernaut in the making. I don't see how – you could pass up that opportunity. I would feel bad for Anthony Brown. And I, I put it this way. I guarantee you people out there for clickbait will, will recommend LSU, right? With Miles Brennan there and the two guys that they just got, the two freshmen. What's the difference? What is the difference? This is still on the West Coast for JT Daniels. His family can still be out there. And this team has a shot to win the national championship as soon as this season. Come on, man. Shoutouts to Mississippi State because he just played under Mike Leach pupil Graham Harrell in his version of the air raid offense. So that could be a seamless transition. And also Ole Miss where Lane Kiffin would get a former USC quarterback. You know he misses it being out there in California doing his thing. And he should know JT Daniels pretty well having been out there himself. So there you have it, man. Those are some pretty good schools. I think that he would do well in any school that he goes to. In any school that he goes to, you know, damn well, I'm going to have something on it. So make sure you keep it locked, baby. Top billing sports, and I am out. Your boy Murph. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.